we're actually gonna see the Diddy Kong off the rip. I, by the way, I am a, I've been playing Soul Calibur since two. I am a huge Siegfried fan. So if they ever did that, I will lose my damn mind. Well, I'm gonna lose my mind in this set. Of course, these two are ridiculous. Getting in the game one, Sharp versus 8-Bit Man. What's your opinion on Sharp going with Diddy Kong first uh, to start off? Uh, honestly, look, man, I'm not a fan of Diddy. I'm gonna be real, man. I hate this character. This character is broken for, <laughs> this character is ridiculous in this game. I hate him, bro. I hate, I hate his real, I, yeah, I hate fighting Diddy. I also hate fighting Diddy. For, since the years of implementation of Diddy, look, I actually like Diddy Kong as a character overall outside of Smash, but in Smash, Banana just straight up deals with so much, so many options. Just so many options by yeah. putting it out there and controlling half the stage. At least Ape Man though has Gyro to kind of contest that pressure too. Yeah, I, when you look at Diddy Kong and this matchup as a whole, right, like. Rob is a character on Wi-Fi is already strong. He's pretty strong offline, right? So he has the zoning tools to really fight Diddy. Wow, what an up smash too after that aerial because the hitbox starts from below. So it also doubles as anti-air. For Sharp going Diddy, it's good just because you have the speed to catch up to Ape Man. You get that tech chase like you see so. You can put him off stage. You have a really, really good edge guard game plan with that projectile or item that's basically banana you get that forward smash diddy has really good tools to actually combat zoners because you can actually edge guard zoners and a character like rob is really difficult to edge guard and if you can definitely force him off the ledge or force him to consider his ledge plays with banana it makes things infinitely a little bit easier than it would be without a projectile like banana i'm sorry item exactly. like banana yeah, same exact gameplay. Both of them put that out at the ledge. They control the pace of the game by doing so. And the, the only thing that, well, that backer is finally going to do it. The only thing that Ape Man has going for him in that, like in this matchup overall, is that he's got kill throws that are easier, and he's got earlier kill potential overall. Because Diddy Kong is usually pretty good at solidifying a lot of KOs against like midweights, heavier characters. Right can be very annoying even though you can keep them stuck from playing the game forever you have to play it slow and play it smart otherwise like sharp will get them both to ko percent and ape man is gonna be the one to close it out first yeah exactly Do not buff diddy anymore but diddy got enough buffs thank you very much uh, yeah i was gonna say please There's no more no yeah we don't need to buff this character this character is fine actually i'm glad they nerfed another infinite thank god we don't need those we don't need those they, this character is so much better than people give it credit for, especially offline. But even here online, like he still can succeed. Just banana in control in the combo game. You see right there, he's like he's able to just keep pressure on him by getting a hold of his gyro too. That's another good thing that Diddy has in this matchup is that he has a great item toss, which allows him to use the gyro just as good as Rob. Yeah, I was gonna say like if you look at Diddy's toolkit as a character, you can't have this toolkit and be that bad unless your name is Banana, but that's different. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but Diddy Kong is like, you look at the character, yeah, this character was nerfed from his original Smash 4 iteration, but the character is still, like you said, very strong, both offline and online here, but great for Sharp Man, avoiding the laser, coming back on the stage, getting the back air, avoiding the down tilt, that high profile allows him to avoid that hitbox. Second back air at the ledge, great job controlling Ape Man at the ledge. Oh, this is bad! <laughs> Luckily, he was able to air dodge out. But Ape Man has been doing a great job overall. Rob, another character that has received significant changes in, since his iteration at the beginning. Up throws, oh, actually, he's just gonna go for the up, the, the up air. It's guaranteed at that point because you can't mash out fast enough to get away from that. Yeah, higher percents make things a lot harder to mash out for sure. Up throw, up air, no down air, forward air to push him for the stage control. That's the thing about Diddy Kong, man. His forward air just has great knockback great hitbox too and it pushes him for stage control and gets you off the stage as well it's, it's honestly it does really good wonders for the character toss the forward air he's looking for an opportunity with nab and missed it here i do like how ape man slowly just trying to take control against sharp because he knows that's the name of the game man if i can slow diddy down i can bring things Whoa. back they have frame traps and pace control. That's all you need. And Ape Man can do the same thing. Both of them have the ability to do it. Right now, Ape Man at KO percent though, so now he's just one mistake away from getting clapped by one of these bananas. However, an anti air like this could like oh, he's frame trapped him, but he missed him on the landing. That was great. He forced the air dodge, but couldn't get anything else. And I like the fact that he retreated as soon as he got the banana too, because that's an easy way to get destroyed. Yeah. Up air. Good patience there on the center platform. Ape Man retreating towards the ledge. Good toss on the banana, but he doesn't force anything from Sharp. Just holding the shield and reading that opportunity with the down smash. And Sharp comes back from what was Ape Man's game to win. That's such a scary spot, too, because um, down tilt can usually lead to up smash in many positions. But right. if you don't know all of, like, if you DI out, you're not sure if they could get in fast enough to get that. You usually want to mash air dodge. You want to get away. But mm -hmm. Sharp knew. 
The percent was a little bit too high, so he was probably going to mash that air dodge and covered it afterwards. And even if he happened to miss that, he would have been fine. I see an MVD floating around in the chat, by the way. Yeah, I do see an MVD in the chat. Sorry, I was just like, <laughs> oh, but good stuff to Sharp, though, able to just take that, right? Like, at the last opportunity, knowing... I think Diddy's skill ceiling is at a level where, in Ultimate, it's really hard for me to judge because I don't mean Diddy as a character. But when I look at it at face value, it's definitely a character that requires you to know different mix-ups, right? And like that down tilt down smash is a really good opportunity at that percent. Just knowing, okay, cool. I know how Ape Man might be trying to avoid me here, especially later on. If I go down tilt down smash, right? Like normally somebody would be expecting down tilt forward smash, down tilt up air, but down tilt down smash, definitely a change up. I think when I look at Diddy as a character too, he rewards you for having knowledge on setups on his percents like every character does but it goes a little bit of the extra mile just because of some of the knockback on his moves but also his speed and his ability to kind of like also edge guard his opponents and force situations like that you know what i like about this too that sharp is kind of like removed from the equation at the beginning we talked about how sharp could go zss but ape man can answer with his own diddy kong he could stick with sephiroth but ape man did really well against sephiroth by right, going right. diddy kong he has now not only giving him giving himself a pretty solid matchup for diddy kong against a big framed character he also removes Ape Man from potentially wanting to counterpick to that Diddy Kong to fight the Ditto. So if he gets into a point where he maybe gets a, like a game lead up and he's up like last last game and Sharp has counterpick, Sharp can force him to just stick with Rob and then go ZSS just to snipe a game. He's kind of playing him out in not only the like the stage picks but the character picks right now. I like the evasion. I like how I, I like the fact that they both retreat to center stage. Anytime that you don't have an item in hand in this game, the, the neutral pressure is kind of hard. You don't really have that presence that forces people to want to hold shield or maybe right, right. force them to jump. So they both kind of just reset so they could get that. And, and just like having that item control so because he like right there, right? Ape Man could have ran in to get something, but because he had to take the trade to banana, it's it shut him down. Mm -hmm. All right, Sharp, trying to get into ledge play here, but you know how it is with Ape Man. He always has opportunities to find you to get let go of ledge, hold the shield, or find his way back. Double whiff grabs here, and that's good for Sharp to get that down tilt. No follow-up. The Diddy's do live and die by that side B, and it'll be stuffed out by the gyro. Yeah, speaking of living or dying, I'm surprised he's still alive. 175, <laughs> oh, yeah. grab will do it. <laughs> he's sit he is sitting there fighting for his life. He's just he's staying on the run, trying to dip, not trying to throw hands at 8 I don't blame him. Just looking for that one banana confirmed. Staying on the ground, Oof. he finds it. Yeah, good call on that one, Ajax, because you know what his game plan was there, living at that high percent. 201, able to avoid the down air. Here's the toss into an upright 22%. Extra credit homework is being turned in, man. You know he definitely doesn't want to lose the stock, especially on Town and City with this high percent and this lead he's got over Ape Man. He wants to hold that, but I don't toss once again to the aerials here. And that's good, too, because you can tell that he's looking for the end lag on Ape Man's moves now. So he's looking to punish him for his commitments, especially on things like those aerials. It does have a big hitbox. It does have a couple active frames, though. You can punish it. Oh, my God. I just realized they, they are playing this game as Sakurai intended. They have banana and gyro. <laughs> <laughs> Items on tripping happening. It's it, it's it's crazy. It's, this is exactly what he wanted. No oh, God. <laughs> as long as we don't see a random Pokeball show up, we good. You better watch out. Oh, I thought he was gonna look for an air dodge de like back to stage to maybe cover him with a down air. But Sharp had stage positioning there. He's like, you know what? I'll just wait. And because of yeah. that, the Ape Man didn't do anything, he was able to just cover him with a back air. And it was good too because he knows that Ape Man is gonna go for that far right. DI just to avoid Diddy Kong as a whole and then obviously use that upbeat to try to make a way to recover So that's good on sharp just to understand. Okay, cool. He wants to go off the deep end to recover I won't let him I'll let I'll punish him here. I still can't believe he lived 244. That's crazy And now because <laughs> sharp has a whole stock up here, too He can do exactly what we talked about with Ape Man where Ape Man with the stock up can kind of force some of these like early side B attempts at the ledge Try to play box with him a bit more, but now he's just getting the big boy damage Brings him all the way to 87% with the extra tick off the top, and he's just kind of like covering everything all on the ledge. Now he's got to watch out for Ooh. potential neutral get up because of exactly that. Just like I could see the range on that forward smash, and he had just met the threshold. And Sharp, 
I'll, Ajax, look, man, if Sharp went to school, man, he knows how to turn in the extra cut of homework. He said, you know what? I'll mm-hmm. turn it in before it's due. I want this extra cut. Let me get this two stock. And I'll see a man with this game two and set point in my hands. Ape it, man, was just narrowly away from the forest smash. But man, Sharp just a little bit closer here with the banana toss as well. You could see it too. Sharp actually tried to, posi- it went a little bit forward, but he tried to position himself in a way that because of the big frame of Rob, if he decided to roll in off that, uh, off that tech, he probably would have gotten hit by the forward smash. But right, because right. he had it just enough out of range, Sharp, I don't know if it was a completely intentional or not, I'm pretty sure it was, but he was able to get that second hit in there to still get the KO, knowing that that was going to be enough. So that was really a really good attempt at option coverage. It worked out. He was able to cover both the tech and the roll and cost, cost Ape Man that game. I think that this Diddy Kong pick was tremendous because this really does prevent him from being able to like want to go with the Diddy Kong ditto. Yeah, I, I do agree with Helvet, and that's kind of one of my favorite things about having Helvet and Axie above in this chat. Uh, Helvet definitely says uh, if you have good fundamentals, you can get far with Diddy. Yep. Yeah, he's not even doing any advanced Diddy stuff. Yeah, honestly, good I, fundamentals, good neutral. Diddy rewards that as a character yep. and with his tools. I mean, a, a little unknown fact usually for a lot of people is that Sharp is, Sharp's original main back in Smash 4 and kind of played for a long time was actually Diddy Kong. So he, he's always been a fundamentally strong player. Mm-hmm. And a lot of this game as a whole is just fundamentals. If you have good yeah. fundies, you can carry a lot. Oh, definitely. You understand how to deal with, all you really need to do is, okay, what do I need to do to cover text? What do I need to do to cover ledge? And what do I need to do to cover advantage state? And it just dealing with jumps. If you simplify the game to that point, you can improve so much rather than always going for every single stylish play that you labbed out on uh, in trading mode. Because if you got no neutral, you got nothing. Look, man, I know everybody wants the meta view clips. Meta view here, man. They, they provide. Oh, oh what is that's going the clip. On? That is the clip. I, I just told you they want the meta view clips, bro. And they know I ape it, man. It gets the reward of the meta view clip here. But it, going back to like you said, Ajax, right? Like if you stop fighting for the clips, you get that good neutral, man, you play you play the fundies as strong enough and you'll get rewarded a lot. There's a lot of characters that reward you for mashing, right? But if you do have strong fundamentals, good neutral, you can go very, very far. And Sharp definitely demonstrates that you can do that with Diddy because of the character's toolkit here. But Ape Man will get that good trip against Diddy. Forward air, charge the gyro, looking to cover the side beat. Like I mentioned, man, Diddy's live and die, but... Yeah, exactly. We've said it time and time again. Ape Man with a stock up is so dangerous because he just understands how to establish that you you got to go in. You got to find this KO. This is something you always got to do it. But when you have a stock up, you need to know how you can just take advantage of the people wanting to overdo it. And even though he got caught there with that back air, good job by Sharp catching him, peeking above the ledge. He got 98% out of that stock. So he was able to make sure that after that early SD, he was able to take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, SD might be pretty costly here, but Sharp slowly oh bringing him back here, 98 to 53, and getting a lot of oh control. Dear. Center stage, up air. I was going to say, man, if Ape Man was smart, man, he might have to turn on those jets and avoid a lot of those aerials. You don't want to get juggled. What a play! Look at that opportunity with the dash dancing. Just looking to see how Ape Man might let go of shield. We talked about it, man. Good neutral, good fundamentals, man. You want to see if you're, how your opponent will react to that. Exactly. Like, all you, like once... Once you get a hold of a big body character who has a hard time landing, take full advantage of it. Because Sharp was looking at a solid deficit there and immediately answered it back. I also like how he just walked up to him because he gets data. See how he moves. If Ape Man grabs him, worse. But good job catching him in midair with that side B, trying to monkey flip a little bit too high. Yeah. And we talked about a man that live and die by it. But at that point, Ape Man knows how high he's going to go for that recovery. Might as well punish him for it. And what a punish there. Covering the jump to as well. You want to make sure you slow down Diddy before he gets all his movement going. Because you know how fast his character can be. What a setup there with the gyro too. To cover any potential roll or escape from the ledge. You know that Ape Man wanted him there. I like the immediate down smash too because the down smash the down air doesn't put a whole lot of knockback so you stop somebody from trying to attempt to punish you and he just he keeps himself safe and that's oh that, that might do it it's not gonna do it just yet that was very close but another one of those can't take it out he's got to stay on the run you see how he's kind of going to full center screen uh full other side of the stage now mm-hmm. and keeping himself away that way he can get as much extra damage get sharp within maybe grab ko percents that way on the fresh stock it'll be a lot easier okay Forcing that low recovery. Oh, close. Narrowly missing it, but yeah, that down tilt's so good at the ledge. 
Side B, yeah. Oh, that'll raise the neutral get up, and that'll be all Shiro. Eighth and Matt here finally fighting point on the board right when it mattered the most. And Sharp it was one game away from 3 0, and Eighth and Matt, he's not going to give it to him for free. They're doing too damn good of a job of staying alive forever. Sharp was able to get up to 242 at one point during this set. Eighth and Matt consistently <laughs> yeah. living up to like 140, 160s, just avoiding all of the KO pressure from, from Sharp. And that just makes it rough because Diddy essentially wants to kill you comfortably around like the 105 to 130 range if he could find himself a banana into a KO confirm so they don't bounce too far away after a down tilt or something. So the fact that he was staying past that, that makes him have to find a jump read with a back air, a raw F smash punish on a tech, or, you know, back there at ledge, but you ain't never getting that because Ape Man refused to ever actually just neutral get up in front of him. <laughs> Yeah, neutral. Uh, I feel like neutral getting up against Diddy is definitely yeah a crime. And Ape Man, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, don't, <laughs> don't do it. Do don't it. do it. <laughs> don't. That's the last option you want to go for. And with a character like Rob, Ape Man knows what you can do as Rob to recover against a character like Diddy. So that's how. That's kind of one thing I like. The one of the few games that we saw with Sharp, where he knows how Ape Man wants to recover to avoid him, and he'll go mm -hmm. off the deep end, even to the sides of the blast zone to get that back air, because he knows that game plan recovery from Rob as a character, but also he knows Ape Man's habit. This isn't the first time these two have played in the scramble. Exactly. And now we're at that point, remember I said before, if Sharp gets game gets a game set up lead on him and he loses a match, now Ape Man has to solidify his character pick first. Which yeah. is why this is gonna be super important. Because if he doesn't pick a stage that is very bad for ZSS, it could lead to Sharp switching to ZSS. Or potentially Sephiroth. I think I think it would be ZSS. So I think that's what's happening here. I think that we probably have a wider stage, so Ape Man can run away more. So we're probably seeing the Oh wow, never mind. I'm wrong. Diddy <laughs> Kong is actually gonna be the business. I personally think that that would have been a good pick, but you know what? The Diddy Kong has been warmed up, and Sharp, yeah. once he gets warmed up, plays extremely good with any character he sticks with. So ZSS could still be on the table, but right now we're gonna see it stick out with the Diddy Kong. Uh, I agree with you. I, I think about the, the way back in Smash 4 when we had the character counters with MK Leo and Tweak, right? And I think Sharp oh, yeah. just knows, like, sticking to Diddy here, I'll avoid a lot of things against Ape Man. <laughs> and it's already been a strong character for me. Why would I want to switch off here? When I'm going into town to city, immediately you can see Sharp starting off very strong by Ape Man with the back throw and almost screening that side B recovery with the laser. I just randomly remembered when you talked about that. Dude, I can't. I think it was a shine, but... Uh, oh, excuse me. The sharp trying to take him off the top. But really quick, MK Leo put as a tag, don't pick DK, and Tweak put no. Because Tweak <laughs> was beating him with DK over and yep. over again. That rivalry is hilarious. Hi, Rickles. Uh, <laughs> Rickles always finds his way to make sure he gets at least his name on one bot. Now you gotta have your name heard everywhere, bro. Come on. <laughs> but you know what? You know, you know what helps you? You know who helps you out there? MetaView, man. They're trying to get everybody's name and clips out there. So shout outs to them. Because you know Ape and Man and Sharp are putting out some clips for them indeed here. Facts. The way they're both playing, you see. Oh, that's bad. Uh, he's going to force him off stage now. Forces the high recovery too, but good air dodge. That was the perfectly timed air dodge because he controlled that. He forced them to go high with the laser, made him have to recover with the monkey flip. And now Sharp is slowly starting to push him back into a position. He Bad thing though, if Sharp can't close his stock out with maybe a back air or something soon, he's getting that much closer to grab the range. Mm -hmm. All right, so far Sharp on the stage first, almost with the forward air, not enough side special to try to cover that landing from Ape Man. Sharp has got to understand when, how he's going to punish Ape Man, and it is going to be with that cross up back air right before the starting frames of laser. That is incredible. Yeah, that's enormous. Finds that. I like it. Just waited a second, make it look like he was going to run in and grab her or something. But catches him with the up air again. Air dodges through another one, though. Sharp is getting away with these at the right times. Now Sharp's going to get big damage. Resets, finds the up air. Looks for another falling one, but good job by Ape Man to DIL. All right, down throw. Easy up air here, and that will kill out that high percent. Even on a high ceiling like Town and City, Ape Man slowly looking to take control against this Diddy. 47%. There is the grab, the forward air. Sharp fighting back here. Yeah, Sharp. Oh, th that is one of the best damage outputs you can get if they if just land right there. Get that Nair, catches him above the ledge, and still gets the K off the side. I think that's a little bit of help from Town and City there. Try it. You saw Ape Man was trying hard to DI up towards the top of the blast zone. And Ape Man not having any bit of that mix up. He knew that that was not real, getting the grab. Oh, watch oh. yourself, Ape Man. Oh. Low recovery. Still good, but that Nair after that end frame, mmm, tough. 
That's so stressful. Just staring at Diddy Kong and Lunch, this is why I hate playing Diddy Kong, right? Everybody hates it. <laughs> because even though Diddy Kong may not have the most consistent kill, but oh my god! That was, yeah, that was a little scary, man. He actually stared face to face with this man in a forward smash, and he was not scared. Freaking Skynet showing up to your front door like... <laughs> the, the robots <laughs> will take over. <laughs> I like I like how Sharp is playing right now too. He's he's playing with just Ooh. oh my god! I was gonna say just enough pressure while staying safe, and then decides to just run in with an upbeat. So hey, <laughs> it worked. It, uh, it's one of those options where like you know what man? I haven't put this out into play in quite some time. True. You know what? If they don't see it coming, I'm already winning half of it. So exactly, save your best mix-ups for the end. Don't throw them all out there right off the bat because you see like now it's the man. He's at ter a terrible spot now. He's at yeah. potential back here at the ledge range. Upso is actually going to just do it. I didn't think that was actually going to KO off, off the top there, but great job, Fudge Sharp. And the clean Diddy Kong coming in here getting the 3-1. I mean, you said it so well, Ajax. Even though that wasn't a mix-up, you save all your best tools for the end. And that up tilt mm -hmm. is like that one last-ditch effort Diddy has, aside from barrels that gives Diddy that, like, oh, wow, I can't believe I died to Diddy up tilt. And then you're like, what do you know? It's fresh. You never saw it coming, and it has a pretty decent arc to actually cover options. So that was really good. And it's, I wouldn't say it's a great anti-air, but it is an anti-air, if, if anything, aside from up smash. I, should, I just realized something. Hey, MVD, did, did that up B, like make you shed like a little tear? The original, oh, my God. The original barrel technician. <laughs>